Okay, welcome back. This is going to be the explanation video for the phases of the moon introductory unit. So let's get going. All right, so again, this is the introduction to observations, explanations, and inferences. I'm going to be giving you my observations in this video as well as what I think the essential observations are. Let me rephrase as well as the explanation for why the phases of the moon occur. So let's jump right into that. Okay. All right. So first things first, the, uh, the full moon is the first set of observations that I wanted you to do. Now, I, I was hoping you would notice that there, we do have quite a few visible craters. So I'll mark, uh, some of the spots where I think, uh, some of the most visible craters are. So this one right here is a fairly visible crater. This one is actually called Tycho Crater. So I'll, I'll note that because it's a, it's a rather useful crater, especially as a landmark. Um, but you know, you can see some craters sort of over over, you know, in this area here, we got some craters up there. Now I'll erase those um, for now because I wanna I wanna have some 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 other things to to note as well. Now there's one other there's, there's another aspect here that I hope you picked up about the moon, and that is its surface is not of a uniform color. Definitely not of a uniform color. So you've got some that's sort of lighter colored and then some that's sort of darker colored. Now the darker colored patches are called, I believe this is pronounced uh, mare. Um, and that is Latin for sea. And the reason, so just, just what the mare are, you know, you've got this is all this region right here. All this is mare. Those things that I've circled, those are all mare. Um, now, the reason they're called mare is because this, these color patches are visible from the earth and people thought they were the seas of the moon. Now, you know a little bit more about the moon, you know that there are no, no seas on the moon, there's no liquid water on the moon, but, but this is what people thought looking up at the moon. Now, there's one mare that I think has a particularly uh, recognizable shape. Now, a lot of people will define this differently. I like this one right here as sort of the crab claw mare. So that's how I think of this one. And this one is one you can you can pick up fairly easily from the whoop, crab craw, crab claw from the earth. You can see this mare pretty easily. Um, just to just go out sometime on a full moon or when you have this portion of the moon visible, you can see this one uh, fairly easily. Now there is another uh, there is another um, another feature that a lot of people will see. It's uh, it's called the man in the moon. Now I have another one that I tend to think of when I think of the man in the moon, but the one that most people point out is they say, okay, what you have here is you have an eye right there, a second eye right there, so he's got kind of oddly shaped eyes, and then you have a nose right there, and then a mouth right there, and they say, okay, that that thing is the man in the moon. Okay, fair enough. Kind of looks like the man in the moon. Part of it's, you know, the his his. I guess that would be his left eye is in the is in the crab claw there, so it overlaps with that one. Now that's fine. I like. Uh, I I have a different man in the moon that I I've I've always thought this one was a lot more apparent. To me, it kind of looks like a skull. Maybe not, but anyway, it, if you go down here, what you have there is you have kind of like the, the the basic outline and down here you have the chin right around there you kind of have the mouth and then these two craters right here make the eye so i've that's the one i've always thought was a little more recognizable particularly if uh particularly if you're looking at these higher resolution images and maybe maybe he's got a nose right there too um, that is not as apparent from the earth. You really do need these higher resolution images, but whatever. I, like I say, I, um, uh, I do, I do think these, these, some of these features are fairly visible. Now, like I said, Tycho Crater, again, is a, is a commonly, uh, it's a very common, uh, landmark on, to, to look for on the moon, particularly when you're looking, uh, when you're looking 
at uh, for craters. Um, one thing to notice is that in this picture we don't see much when it comes to shadows. Uh, when uh, when if I look for for shadows on the craters, go back to red. Um, it's you know maybe like on the very edges over here we can see some of the the shadows on those craters. Um, maybe on the very left side of those craters, but for the most part, it doesn't look like we're seeing many shadows. Now, if you think about what that means, that kind of means that the light is coming straight on at the moon. Okay, so so there's this thing is not being lit up from the side or anything like that. It's like the light's coming straight at the moon. Otherwise, we'd see more shadows, and we'll we'll get a sense of that in uh, in in when we're when we're uh, when we're when when we when we look through some of the other images okay all right so let's move on to the next um to the phases of the moon one now um this 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 is a very very small crescent moon so what what you can what you can basically see here is that this just has the right edge illuminated um, now, you kind of have the sense, just based on sort of this intermediate area right in here, that that the moon isn't gone. It's it's kind of under a shadow. You, we can see, like, like it's to, to the left of that point, it would be like night on the moon, and to the right of that point, it would be day on the moon, and like at that point, it's it's kind of going under, um, going under under its own shadow there. So so it's not like the moon's gone and it has suddenly changed its shape to this uh, to this crescent shape. So it's still there. It's just now that it's under shadow. Not very easy to pick out many of the features. We really can't see um, we really can't see many of the the uh, the features of the moon. Now one thing I would like to point out if this one you probably would not have observed it would it would require you to, to uh, to to have a little extra knowledge of the moon but it's a little it's a little uh little um not not uh not not, not counter it's a little counterintuitive i should say um if we're thinking about what 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 the cardinal directions are here it's important to know that whenever we look at the moon from the northern hemisphere which is where most of us are um we're looking southward, okay? So the moon is, is always a little bit south of us. It's, it's up in the sky, yeah, but, but we're looking at the southern sky to do that. Now, what this means is that, whoops, this direction over here would be west, and this direction over here would be east. So basically, it's kind of like the, the, uh, the western side of the moon is lighted up right here. Okay, so that's that's something you might not have picked up, but it is worth noting. All right, so we'll go on to the next page now. Uh, next observation, we got a larger crescent here, and what we can start to see is we can start to see more shadows on the edges of craters. So I'll just note that one, that one, and then maybe that shadow right there. Hey, this shadow down here. Um, we're seeing shadows on the edges of craters. Now notice those are on the right sides of the craters. Okay. So there, the, we don't have shadows on the left edges. Now it's even hard to see the left edges of some of those craters, but we do have shadows on the right side of those craters. Now you might have picked up that we do have a shadow right here as well. And that one does seem to be on the left, but that 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 large feature is still kind of in. It's still partially in the the, the nighttime zone, so it's a little difficult to say what that means. Now, if we think about what the location of the shadows and what the location of the light means, basically what it means is that our light source is coming in from the right, like so. Okay, so we're having light shine on the moon from this direction. Now you probably know that uh, that 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 the the sun is what lights the moon, and that, that kind of makes sense. But uh, but but yes, indeed, the sun is going to be somewhere off to the right of the moon, which is why we're getting uh, light this way. We think about that's what would make the shadows shine or 
fall in that in the way they do. And that is what that is that is how we could have only this this really small portion of the moon lit up. Now it's also probably behind the moon. It's a little difficult to tell with what's going on with uh with with just a two dimensional image when we have a three dimensional situation. But the the light is also probably behind the moon quite a bit as well. But it is off to the right. So it's so if we think about the direction the light's actually coming. It's kind of coming out. It's coming. It's going. It's going to the left, but also out of the screen. So um, the light is probably, you know, um, the light source, the sun in this case, is probably, you know, somewhere in the screen, but also off to the right of the moon a little bit. Okay, so that is what we're seeing there. All right, let's go on to the next one. Um, we'll eventually start moving through these a little bit faster. So this is the third phase. We've still got a nice little crescent-shaped moon here, so no big deal with that. Um, still see fairly, uh, fairly similar patterns, uh, when it comes to the shadows. So I'll just note there, 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 there. We still got, we still got shadows on the right, the right sides there. Um, we still have this larger, this larger feature where we have a shadow on the left side, but again, it's still partially in the nighttime zone. So a little bit difficult a little bit difficult uh, to tell if that's a shadow or if that's just the lights falling on it slightly differently because it, it might be a lower elevation or something like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll put, a, put a pin in that for now and, and see maybe an additional, in a later phase, that, that feature will be lit up a little bit more. Um, so let's, let's go on to the next one. And there we go. All right. So this one uh, is, has the, 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 we can we can kind of tell that the the background here isn't quite as dark as it was in the previous uh, slides, but we do have uh, we do have a, a larger crescent, and hopefully what you can see is this feature where we were having uh, where we were having uh, shadows on the left side of that. Um, that is actually a mare. So that's actually that that circular shaped mare that was near the crab claw, and maybe maybe it looks like we're seeing just the edge of the crab claw there as well. Now, just to point out, we still have the same shadow patterns on these craters, okay? And notice on the southern side of the moon, on this bottom side of the moon, we do have a lot more craters. Something that was like, even more craters than were apparent from our first image of the full moon when we were still seeing it. Now, as a side note, it's worth picking up that even in the different phase, we're starting to see that little circular shaped mare and possibly the uh, the crab claw mare in the same position that they were at on the uh, on the the full moon. So it's it's like this. We're still seeing that we're still kind of looking at the same side of the moon, even though it hasn't uh, it hasn't uh, it's a different portion of it's being lit up right now. So that's that's uh that's something worth noting there okay so next one now this is kind of interesting because it looks like the whole thing has changed color and there's a question about why that might be the case so i'll go back real quick and we can see it's kind of whitish whitish gray here we go here we definitely have a yellowish tint to it now, a little hard to say why that might be the case, so we'll, we'll, we'll just note that for now. One thing worth noting is that we still have a lot of the same shadow features on the craters, though those craters are much more visible now. And we can definitely see the edge of that crab claw mare there. So, uh, so that's, 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 that's definitely, it definitely does seem to be in the same position as we were seeing before. All right, so let's go to the next one. All right, so we still have a bit of a crescent. Uh, color shifted back, and now we can definitely see the uh, the the crab claw kind of kind of fully. Uh, there was the the eye of the the sort of the, the left eye of the the man in the moon there. Now the shadows on the the craters that were on the edges are starting to get harder to see. Like we can look at this one, that crater is even starting to become difficult to see. But if we think about the craters we saw initially, they were over here. Their shadows are almost invisible now. 
and and that is actually making the craters a lot more difficult to see. Now, the other thing we are seeing here is um, we you know we can we can actually see the extent of the shadows changing. So this crater has a bit of a shadow on its right side, but this crater over here has a lot longer shadow on its right side. So again, we can still see all along sort of the edge of where the, the light gives way to darkness. The shadows in the crate, the shadows make the craters a little bit easier to see at that point. Once we move away from that, we can't see those shadows as well. So that's something worth, worth noting there. Okay, moving on to the seventh phase, we do notice we have a color shift again. Now that's that we'll put a pin in that and, and hold off on that. We definitely have the full view of the crab claw now, so just just note that. Um, definitely have uh, have you know we can see a lot more of these craters down there. Now what we're we should note is that's getting pretty close to where we saw Tycho crater, so that's, that's something worth noting there. We've even got some up here as well, where we can see, you know, due to the way the shadows are located, um, it's, uh, it's, it's starting to be, uh, it's, it's really apparent that we have craters there. Now, at this point, we've kind of stopped being a crescent moon. Now, the way, the, the phase for this moon, you'll hear a lot of people say they'll call it a half moon. This is actually what we call a quarter moon. Now, the reason we call it a quarter moon is because it is one quarter of the way through the cycle. Okay. Whoops. Can't see that through that. So sorry. Write it over here. Quarter moon. Um, and, and basically it, 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 if the moon constantly cycles through this phases, through, through these different phases, we say this one is one quarter of the way through the complete cycle. Okay, so that's why it's called a quarter moon if you hear that. All right, so that's that's something worth whoops, remembering there as well. Okay, so moving on, we have, we're, we're now, the moon is now beyond halfway illuminated. Okay, and we do have that color shift again. And what it starts to look like is it almost looks like, you know, if we were to imagine a moon there, it, it looks like what we have is kind of like a reverse crescent. It's like if there was the dark portion of the moon, it, the, the dark portion of the moon is now crescent shaped, while the visible portion is what, what would be left over. Um, maybe like a reverse crescent. The name for this is actually a gibbous moon. So when it looks like you have that, you're missing that dark crescent out of it, it looks like you have the, the that, that is called a gibbous moon. Now, um, what we have here, definitely see the crab claw in a very similar spot. What we have here, looking like that might be Tycho Crater. So I'll put a question mark there, but it's looking like that thing might actually be the Tycho crater that we're interested in. So, um, so again, we, we saw that crater very clearly in the, uh, in the, the, the first image, but, uh, but it was not as clear that it was this crater marked around it as it is looking at it now. We see there's just a ton of craters around that, that thing. So, um, worth keeping that in mind. Okay. Moving on a little bit. Um, we're we're starting to see that okay maybe maybe what we are looking at here is we are looking at uh we are looking at Tycho crater now it's me it's not it's not exactly clear but we can start to see some of the lines going out from Tycho crater so i'm thinking that thing right there is probably Tycho okay now it does have a bunch of craters around it now could also be this thing this thing could also be Tycho so we'll maybe need to wait a little bit and see see what we see now there's one other thing that is quite apparent here right there we got a really deep crater um, and that's, that's right on the edge of the the light so it's got it's got a very deep shadow we can see that almost the entire thing is filled with shadow it's more just like the left edge is lit up. That's why we can tell it's a crater. But um, but this is almost looking like it's one of those. It was one of. The, it might be one of those white spots we saw in that large mare on the left side of the moon. So so we'll keep that in mind. We'll keep keep looking about looking looking at that. 
Um, we keep going. Now, something kind of interesting happened between these two images. So you see what's going on? It's almost like we had a slight rotation of the moon. Okay, so it's still, we can still kind of see the same features, but it's almost like the moon did this. It's almost like it tilted down a little bit. So that that's possible that the image was rotated in that way. It's possible that something else happened. Um, we definitely are still we're still gibbous and we're still uh, we're 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 definitely a little bit bigger now. This uh, this crater from the previous image is now entirely in light, and yeah, it is looking like it is that uh, that one of those spots in the mare that I pointed out that I said kind of looks like the eye of the uh, of the of the uh of the skull uh looks like we very clearly got Tycho crater there now as well so again we can see that there are just a ton of other craters around there it looks like that particular part of the moon just got bombarded and uh and there are just craters all around it now although we saw that uh, there were definitely craters all over the moon and we are having, like we noticed this already, but we are having a much harder time seeing that as we as we sort of go through it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna jump back. Um, notice that the 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 side of the moon in order the side of the moon that's lit up in order to get this kind of thing. It's still we still gotta be having light come in from this direction. But now it's almost like instead of being partially behind the moon, it's like partially in front of the moon as well. So it's shining down into the moon, but sort of into the screen as well, or into the picture as well as we're doing this. So that's, that is definitely something worth noting. It's like the, the relative position of the light source and the, uh, and the moon have changed. Okay. So that's something worth remembering there. Okay. We move back, and it looks like maybe we rotated just a little bit again. Um, we're getting pretty close to full now. You can definitely see it's not quite full, but we can, you know, we, we're still missing a good chunk of that that mare over here. But we can definitely see the eye. We can see Tycho Crater. So those are those are definitely some things that um, that that are still visible. Um, but but it is a little unclear why we're getting this this rotation of the moon. So uh, so it's worth it's something worth uh, keeping in mind as we we continue to look. Okay, jumping to the next phase. Now we are dang near full here. We can see almost the entire extent of this thing um, with the the two eyes. Now we're not quite there. Uh, I got the nose. We got the mouth. We're not quite there. Um, there was a there was a little bit more of the edge of this mare that we still can't quite see yet, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have to look at that. Um, but uh, but but another thing that's worth noticing is if we just back up a couple of slides and we look around Tycho Crater, um, notice it's much more apparent that this thing is surrounded by craters. Um, whereas if we go up to this twelve. It definitely, the ground definitely looks rough, but the craters are not as visible. And we think about why that might be the case. It's that this, the, they're, they're not really casting shadows. One of the things that lets us see the craters is that they cast shadows. Well, craters are really only going to cast shadows if the light's striking their edges and then casting the shadow into the crater. But if the light's kind of kind of coming straight down, then we're not going to see the shadows as clearly. So maybe that's what's going on here. And given our discussion that maybe that now the light's almost shining directly at the moon as we're looking at it, like like the 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 angle of our eyes is the same angle that the light's hitting the moon. Uh, maybe that's why we can't see these craters as clearly. So so that's that's uh, that's something worth um, seeing. Now there we have, we moved to 13. We've definitely got the full moon. This is pretty close, if not the exact same picture as we had when we were doing, um, when, we were, when we were first looking at the full moon. Now again, you cannot really see a lot of these craters. And again, that's because this light is kind of shining straight down. If you look at the ones where you can see the craters, um, they tend to be on the edges. Like you can see that crater. It's unclear if that's part of a mare or part of a crater. Um, 
maybe there's a shadow right there, but really much more difficult to see these shadows on the craters when the light is uh, is hitting the moon straight on. So that's something something worth keeping in mind. All right, we're going to go here. Now, moon still looks pretty full, but for some weird reason, we had a really odd color shift in between these. Looks like we had a little bit of a rotation as well, but there's a really strange color shift. Now, we we might wonder, okay, what could cause that? Well, maybe the moon changed color. That seems unlikely. It would all change color at once. Um, maybe the sun changed color, but that, that also seems kind of unlikely. Um, now, we think about some, something that can make light, the light from the sun, seem to change color to us on Earth. It... Um, it might have something to do with the, uh, the, the, the time of day. The sun looks kind of reddish and orangish in the morning and in the evening, uh, but, you know, white or yellow during, during the, the height of the day. So maybe that has to do with why the moon is looking like it's a little bit different color in, uh, in some of these cases as well. But we'd have, to, we'd have to take a closer, more detailed look at that uh, if we really wanted to, to kind of get the hang of it. Um, but I do think this is definitely the most dramatic color shift to occur. Now, one thing worth noticing is that we are in, at day 14. So basically, if we, if we think back to uh, our very first slide, the moon was almost visible. Now, the day before that, the moon would have been invisible. So on either day 13 or 14, we've got a full moon. So it takes the moon exactly two weeks to go from being nothing to being full. Okay, so this is this is one of the this is one of the aspects of the cycle, and we're basically halfway through the cycle now. Now I'm going to jump back to slide seven real quick, and remember this was our quarter moon. So if it takes us 14 days to go from having no moon, we call that a new moon, to having a full moon, then the quarter moon should be exactly halfway between that, and we see that that is on day seven. Okay, so that's that is something we we can make note of there. All right, so let's move on to what happens after 15 now, or sorry, after 14. Now we do have a bit of a color shift here, and we're starting to move away from being uh, from being a full moon. Like for instance, we can see that this mare is is uh, in the previous image. There was, it was not on the edge of the moon. It was not on the edge of the light. On this image, we move to 15. It's right on the edge. So it's like a really tall, small sliver has been, has been pulled off the right side of the moon. So we're getting a gibbous moon now. The difference here is that now it's, it's the, the dark crescents are being pulled off the right side of the moon instead of the left side of the moon. Now, another thing you might start to pick up on. We're starting to see shadows on the craters here um, that and and if we think about well where we were seeing most of the shadows was the line where darkness was giving way to light or light was giving way to darkness we're going to start seeing that again as as the moon goes away from full and back towards new okay so we should keep looking for that whoops all right so we go to the next day and we can see that uh, not only is this Mare starting to vanish into shadow, but the Crab Claw is even starting to vanish into shadow. Now we can see, pretty clearly, a crater on, in the Mare on the edge of that Crab Claw. It was not so visible um, if it wasn't right near the shadows, but, uh, but when it's near the shadows, we can see a lot more of the craters there. Okay, so... Um, and we did have a bit of a color shift here, so kind of a... I don't know, what do you call it, yellowish green maybe, to back to sort of a white, whitish gray. And it does seem to rotate. It actually kind of seems to rotate back to sort of where it was at. Um, here, um, it's all kind of downward. There we had a rotation, and then it was pretty stable, and then it kind of rotated backwards. So, um, so it doesn't look like we're going to get a, a view of a different side of this thing. It just kind of looks like it may be wobbling in place a little bit. So that's something, something kind of interesting going on there. All right. Um, we have a bit more shaded here. The crab claw is starting to, 
to fall completely into shadow. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing pretty, like Krakow is not fully in shadow, but definitely a portion of it is. We're seeing again down here, craters are apparent. We've got some visible craters up here, even here some visible crater so we should keep an eye on that as the phases uh, proceed through uh, through through the next uh, the next little set here okay um, so moving on this is the 18th day now the crab claw is pretty much gone like we can see sort of the 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 top of it and maybe the thumb right there um, but the crab claw has kind of vanished into shadow and we're starting to see a lot more of those craters uh, around the Tycho crater area and notice that now the shadows, instead of being on the right side, they are now on the left side, which tells us that what's, what's going on now is that the light should be coming in from this way. Now, because it's still, it, it's still, give us, it's probably still a little bit in front of the moon, but, um, but the light is definitely coming in from the left side as opposed to the right side now. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. All right. So... This is day 19, a bit of a color shift. Um, what I noticed about this one is it's not, it doesn't seem as detailed as the previous ones. Like even like, around here, we had some pretty nice details around those, those craters. Uh, that detail seems a little bit washed out in this picture. I'm not entirely sure why, but, but that is something worth noting. Now we definitely have some very good views of the craters right along that that spot where the uh the the uh the the light gives away to the darkness now um make a prediction of where you think we're going to see a quarter moon again okay so make a prediction about what day you think we're going to see a quarter moon. maybe you already noticed this but but we'll see it one more quarter moon so think about where it is it's going to be the next one or the one after that okay so we definitely look pretty close to a quarter moon. We can kind of see Tycho Crater still there. Um, we're definitely getting a, a view of all those craters. We're seeing the shadows again on the left side again. So the shadows on the left side of the craters as opposed to the right side. Um, but it does make it a lot more clear that those shadows are there. Now, I would say this moon is still slightly gibbous. It is not quite gone to the quarter moon stage. Um, now... It's, it's a little difficult because in between these two, it looks like it kind of skipped it. Um, so uh, w it looks like this one is now now into the crescent phase. So hard to say. Um, this one is probably closer to being a quarter moon. So I would that's probably what I would call, call this one in, in that case. Um, so again, almost three weeks uh, since, or, or exactly three weeks since we, we would have been on day zero. So 21 days from day zero or the 21st day from day zero now this this again is a quarter moon but a lot of times it's called a three quarter moon and the reason is because it is on its way back to new now when the moon is on its way back to new when it's 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 getting less and less illuminated each day we call that a waning moon. That's what it means to wane. It means to, to become less. So if the, we, we mean that the light on the moon, the, the amount of the moon we can see is getting smaller each day. That is a waning moon. For the first half of the cycle, when we're going from, back it up, when we're going from, you know, from like a, a crescent to a one quarter to a gibbous to ultimately a full moon, that is called a waxing moon. Maybe there was the full moon. That is called a waxing moon. So when we're going from a from a smaller moon to a larger moon, that is a waxing moon, while a larger moon to a smaller moon is called a waning moon. So here maybe you see maybe you think this is the very first crescent moon. And that, you know, that makes sense. Um, okay, so we we're starting to see uh, we're starting to see some of these features. Uh, vanish into shadow. It looks like Tycho Crater is gone into shadow. We can still see uh, we can still see some of the features. Like we got a we got sort of an interesting feature there that was kind of making up one of the eyes of that that skull. Maybe the 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 left eye of that skull. Maybe it's the right one. Maybe that one would be the left one. I don't know. Hard to tell in this one when we're we're starting to to lose it. But something really interesting happens with the next picture. If you notice, I'll erase this one. Just leave this one marked. 
Um, we can see a bit of, uh, of, of shadow on the, the left edge of that crater, but when we go to the next one, the thing is almost completely buried in shadow. So that seems to be the same crater, um, but it's now completely buried in shadow. So it, it's as the, 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 the sun gets lower, it's, we, we can see that, that crater much more clearly as it becomes uh, almost buried. <coughs> now we've got very clearly uh, a crescent moon, but again, it's, it's opposite crescent what we had before. Remember the first crescent we had was a right side crescent moon. Now we have sort of an opposite crescent moon. And if we think about what's going on, um, sort of the shaded portion of the moon would now be that gibbous shape as well. So not a very good, uh, not a very round uh, <laughs> shaded portion of the moon there, but, but you get the idea. Whoops. All right. Okay, getting into this one, we, we have a bit more of uh, the, the crescents thinned out a bit. This side is, we're not seeing quite as many craters on here. We do have some down near the bottom there and some up near the top. Not so many on the Mare, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's uh, makes you wonder why that might be, but uh, not as many there. Some, but, but definitely not as many um, on that point. Okay, so uh, we do have a bit of a color shift when we jump to day 24. Again, a thinner crescent. Craters are starting to get harder to see. Um, you can kind of, you can kind of imagine what's going to happen. We're going to have a few more days where we have a thinner crescent each day, and then we're going to, we would finally get down to where we'd have a new moon and there would be no moon in the sky. So again, day 25, thinner crescent. We do have a crater visible there, crater visible there. Um, day 26, even thinner crescent, still see some visible craters. And day 27 is our last image where we have barely any moon at all. Um, now it's worth noting that the crescent, it, it does not go, it kind of stops right there. So it's not quite a semicircle. Um, and that, that is something worth keeping in mind as you move into your other observations. Um, particularly when you, when you jump into the Venus observations, which you'll do after the remainder of this video. So the question now is after going through these observations, um, can we explain why this is happening? Okay, so can we explain why this is, uh, why, why this is occurring? Now there's, there's, there's a bit that you need to know about, um, oh, I forgot I had this. So this is sort of uh, an animation of the phases of the moon. Uh, all of those images kind of stitched together and looks like the colors have been, this actually might be from a different moon cycle, but you can actually kind of see that uh, the moon is getting a little bit bigger at different times in its phase. And even though we can basically see the same side of the moon, we do have a little bit of rotation each day as well. So, um, so that's what's happening. Now this doesn't of course happen in one, one day. This would take, this is basically a time lapse that's where a whole bunch of things have been stitched together over the course of a month. And you can see uh, up here the day cycling through and they're showing the phase at each point of the day. So you can see the year as well there. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to why this is the case. First thing we need to talk about is the sun and the moon path. Now they take a very similar path across the sky. Um, their positions are always a little different relative to one another. But basically, you've heard the expression, sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Well, the moon does exactly the same thing. That's the sun path. The moon does exactly the same thing. It rises in the east and sets in the west. And for most of us in the northern hemisphere, it passes a little bit to the south of us. And actually, neither one of these actually passes overhead. Um, it does if you get, get a little bit more south towards the equator. There are certain times of year where it'll pass directly overhead. But uh, for the most part in the continental United States, we don't actually get the, uh, the sun to pass directly overhead. It's always passing a bit south of us, which means our shadows at noon will always point uh, north. That's actually one of the ways we know this. Okay, now the key here is that this, the position of the sun and the moon they're not always the same. So they don't always, they're not always opposite. They don't always rise, you know, when one is rising, the other setting or, or so on and so forth. Um, 
and you've you've probably seen this. You sometimes you can see the moon out during the day. It's not. It's you know sometimes it's out during most of the day. Now turns out the location of the sun and moon correlates very well with the phase of the moon. And um, if we're in a crescent phase, let's see my my little drawing. Turns out that the the uh, the the moon is actually very very close to the. Uh, to the sun in when we're in a crescent phase. And I've actually drawn this wrong. I've drew, I drew, drew these crescents the same. This one is actually incorrect. It would be more like that if we were going to draw it. But um, but in any event, the point here is that the relative position of the sun and the moon it, for a crescent phase is that the moon and the sun will be close to one another. Okay. Now, one thing that's important to know is that the sun on any given day, on, on every day actually, the sun moves a little bit faster across the sky than the moon does. Now what this means is that if, if say we're looking at these two, um, these two, the, the this this relative position of the sun and the moon, it means that over the course of the day, the sun is going to get a little bit closer to the moon. Now once the sun actually catches the moon, then um, then we have a new moon. So that that's you can't really take a picture of the new moon because you can't really see it. And in order to do it, you'd have to almost point your camera right at the sun, which means you're not really going to be able to see the moon, unfortunately. So um, so, but but if the sun is a little bit behind the moon, that means it's going towards a new moon. It's going to catch up to it a little bit every day. It's going towards a new moon, and it's going to be a smaller crescent or possibly a new moon the next day. On the other hand. If the moon is behind the sun, what the sun is going to do is it's going to get a little bit further away from the, the moon the next day until eventually we get to a um, quarter moon. When the sun moves ahead of the, uh, of the, the moon such that, uh, such that we eventually have a, a quarter moon, and the, the key, the key relation with a quarter moon is that the sun and the moon will make a 90 degree angle with the observed, the, the, you, the, the angle between the two will be about 90 degrees. Now, the, this pairing right here, that would be a first quarter. And again, the reason why is the sun basically is still moving away from the moon. Okay, so that means that as the sun moves further and further away from the moon, the phase is going to be the moon. The moon phase is going to be, you know, it's going to then go to gibbous and then go to full. So the moon is getting larger. So that would be a first quarter. On the other hand, if we had, we would still have a quarter moon in this situation. We have a 90 degree angle, but we will now have a third quarter moon because again the sun is now catching up to this moon so the next day the sun will be a little bit closer which will mean it'll be a crescent moon and then a little bit closer will be a crescent moon until finally we get to a new moon and then we start the cycle over again um, for the gibbous and the full uh, gibbous moon the sun and the moon are pretty far from each other in the sky so it's more than 90 degrees now what we have here is a waxing gibbous and again, the reason is that the sun's going to get even further away from the gibbous moon um, the next day, which will mean that the moon will be will look even bigger. Here we have a waning gibbous because the sun is going to catch up to the, the moon a little bit the next day, and it's going to move towards a three-quarter moon and then to a crescent moon. So waning gib waxing gibbous or waning gibbous. Now... If uh, we have a full moon, that is the situation where the sun is setting just as the moon is rising, or the moon is setting just as the sun is rising. So that those are the conditions that we have for a full moon. So, so if we we understand those things, it's hard to see that um, in an image. It's hard to get both the sun and the moon in a full image where it. Where you know it's where, where both are visible and you can you can kind of clearly see what's going on. Those observations are are a bit better to go out and make yourself. So I definitely encourage you to do that. But once we see this, we can actually get a sense of why the uh, why the 
the the phases of the moon occur. So this is this is what what I have here is I've drawn the sun and it's obviously not to scale. But but basically the way we can think about it is the sun is always lighting up half of the moon. So whichever side of the moon is facing the sun, that side will be lit up. But the phase is going to be determined by which one, which side of the moon this guy sees. So if we have this situation, this first situation where the sun and the moon are in essentially the same spot, then what side of the moon is this guy seeing? Well, he's looking at the moon that direction. What he's seeing, he's just seeing the dark side of the moon. So he's seeing the side without any light on it at all, which means it's a new moon. And notice he's looking in the same direction as he would be if he was looking right at the sun. And we go to the next one. If he's looking there, he's looking at a slightly different direction than, than he would be if he was looking at the sun. But what side of the moon is he going to see? Well, he's still only going to see the half of the moon that's facing him. So we think about that as the side of the moon that he's going to see. Now, what this means is that most of what he sees is dark. He's only going to see this little tiny sliver of it lit up. Now, it kind of looks like... Uh, looks like a pizza at that point but but um, it's a little bit easier to tell if you do if you do the experiment yourself like with a ball and a flashlight you can kind of see why seeing only this this tiny sliver of light results in a crescent shape it has to do with the geometry of the moon um, we go to when the Sun and the moon are basically separated by 90 degrees and what we have here is he can see the the side of the moon that he can see is half lit up half dark so that would be the quarter moon. Um, we move to where the sun and the moon are a little bit further apart. The side of the moon that he can see is mostly lit up. Little little sliver that's still dark, but mostly lit up at that point. So that's why he's seeing a gibbous moon right there. Now we go to the final moon. The side he sees is the is the entirely lit up portion of the moon which means that this is the full moon, okay? So this is why the, 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 the phases of the moon are happening and why they are perfectly correlated with the relative position of the sun and the moon together. It has to do with the way the light shines on the moon and which side of the moon the person sitting on Earth can see, okay? So that's what's going on with... Uh, with with these with, with with the phases of the moon and why they're occurring so hopefully you found that useful hopefully you found that explanation useful you can put that into your own words and use that to answer all of the questions from the worksheet so thank you for tuning in and i will see you in the inference lecture uh oh oh yes one more thing before uh before i go on yeah, I, I did want to say one more thing before talking to you about uh, about uh, before letting you you go on to the the particularly your Venus observations. Now, unlike the Moon, Venus is what we call tethered to the Sun, meaning that Venus never gets very far away from the Sun. It only ever reaches some maximum distance away from the sun, some maximum angle, calling that theta maximum here, and then it goes back towards the sun. It gets below the sun, reaches some maximum angle there, call that theta max, and then it goes back the other way. So it's unlike the moon in that it's never, you're never going to have Venus appear over there. That does not happen relative to the sun. It's always close to the sun, either a little bit ahead of it or a little bit behind it. So Venus is often either called the morning star or the evening star. If Venus is the morning star, it's a little bit ahead of the sun. And it rises early in the morning before the sun comes up. And uh, once the sun comes up, you can't really see Venus anymore. The sun's light is too bright. If, it, if Venus is the evening star, so this would be Venus is the morning star. If Venus is the evening star, it's right there in that you can start to see it as soon as the sun goes down. And it's still up in the night for a little, it's still up in the sky for a little bit of time in the evening. But again, it never gets on the other side. So Venus is never rising as the sun is setting. 
So keep that in mind as you're doing your observations of Venus. So thank you again for tuning in. I will see you in the next lecture where we're going to talk about Venus, how it's similar to the moon, how it's different from the moon, and what that means. So thank you. I'll see you then.